All right, now let's go to Jude. Do you want to see a knockout verse that annihilates Seventh-day Adventism and those folks who believe that Jesus is the Archangel Michael, a verse that's a nightmare? The one verse that if you understand the passage, you understand its meaning, you will annihilate Seventh-day Adventists <clears throat> because no matter how much they spin it, they can't get around it. Here it is. Jude 1, 8 to 9. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies. Talking about these heretics who fell away, perverting the gospel, perverting the message of Christ, preaching a false gospel in which they give themselves the license and others the license to use the grace of Christ as an excuse to indulge in immorality, fleshly desires, and also arrogate to themselves an authority that they don't have to slander celestial spiritual beings. This is the context. In the very same way, on the strength of their dreams, these ungodly people pollute their own bodies, reject authority, and heap abuse on celestial beings. Now watch the example that Jude gives to show you that these people are treading on dangerous ground. These nobodies, or not even Christians, who dare arrogate to themselves an authority to even slander spiritual beings who are more powerful than them and who can harm them. That's how arrogant and delusional these people are. Look at the example he gives. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not himself dare, damn, a mighty being, believed to be the mightiest of the angelic creatures, would not dare to condemn him for slander, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now, this is a nightmare. Why? It's saying not even the Archangel Michael, as mighty and majestic as he is, would dare go up against Satan, condemn him for slander, or presume to pass judgment on him because he knew his limits and he knew he didn't have that kind of authority, so invoke the Lord to rebuke him. How in the world are you going to say this is Jesus? Can you say this of Jesus? You're going to tell me that Jesus, the Archangel Michael, would not dare go up against Satan to accuse him or to condemn him or to condemn Moses, whom Satan was accusing in order to claim rights over Moses' body, but he left it to God the Father? You can say this about Jesus? If you're a Trinitarian, as they claim, now, what does the word etonmisen mean? It comes from tolmao. What does it mean? To have courage to be bold. You understand what it means? Jesus did not have the courage and wasn't bold enough to accuse Satan. You really want to believe this is what Jude is saying about Jesus? I dare endure and bold have courage make up the mind. So you're telling me that Jesus did not have courage, wasn't bold enough to go against Satan? Tolmao. Properly, to show daring courage necessary for a valid task, a risk. To show daring. So Jesus didn't have courage. He didn't have daring courage. Courageously venture forward by putting fear behind. So Jesus didn't have that courage and let fear prevent him. Tomao, to have courage, to be bold. And bold, bold, courageous, dare, dare. Gather up courage, have courage. Have This really applies to Jesus? Are you out of your mind? Only God can dethrone Satan, destroy Satan. And that's why Michael needs the power of God, authorizations from God, the strength supplied by God to overcome Satan. That's why we need Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the authority of Jesus to conquer Satan, resist him. Because without Jesus, we are powerless against Satan. So you're telling me, you're telling me that Jesus, the Archangel Michael, did not have boldness or courage and would not dare to be bold enough to confront Satan? Because that's what Jude 1.9 is saying. So what's the example? You perverts, if Michael himself would not dare and be bold enough to go against Satan, because he knows that's God's territory and he needs God's power and authority to resist Satan, and only God can tame Satan. That's why he invokes the authority of God against Satan. Who the hell do you think you are to go against Satan think you're going to come out unscathed? And yet this applies to Jesus? 
And to show you the nonsense of this, with the foregoing in perspective, how could it be conceivable for Jesus to be depicted this way? How could Christ be described as not daring to bring a railing accusation or of refusing to pass judgment on Satan's adversary, especially when he's expressly said to be the one who does all the judging? Here, watch. The Bible is explicitly clear that the Father has entrusted all judgment to Jesus, which is why he is the one coming to judge the living and the dead, to repay every person according to what he, he has earned. Here, John 5, 22, 23. And John 5, 25, 29. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son. And it was, he's the one who's going to come to raise the dead spiritually and physically. Right? And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his, who's his? The voice of the Son of God, and come out. Still not convinced? Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each, each person according to what they have done. Matthew 16, 27. Here again, Acts 10, 36, 42 to 43. Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all, he, God, commanded us, apostles, to preach to the people to testify that he, Jesus, is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. If Jesus judges the living dead, you're telling me he wouldn't dare condemn Satan and rebuke Satan? You caught it? Revelation 22, 12, 13. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. So the one who's coming is coming to repay you, judge you, recompense you. And that one is Jesus. I, Jesus, have sent my angel. And this Jesus says, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. And in case you don't see it, notice, the one who says, I'm coming soon, who says, my reward is with me, and I'll repay each one according to what you've done. That one coming soon who says, I'm Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and the end. Look, look right here. Yes, I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. And finally... When Jesus showed up on earth, demons trembled in fear, were stricken with horror and dread, were afraid and shouted when they saw Jesus because they knew he's the Holy Son of God who could destroy them, and they begged him not to harm them. Here it is, Mark 1, 21, 27. As he was in a synagogue, there was someone possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. See, they knew who he is. You're the Holy One, Son of God, separate from us. We're powerless against you. And we're afraid of you because we know you can destroy us. And when Jesus warned him, rebuked him, come out, the impure spirit shook the man violently, came out of him with a shriek. And the people freaked out. They're amazed. What is this? A new teaching with authority? He has given orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. How about here? Mark 3, 10 to 12, specifically verse 11. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him, cried out, You are the Son of God, in fear and horror and dread, crying out, because they knew he could destroy them. They were powerless against him. How about this one? Luke 8, 26 to 31. Luke 8, 26 to 31. The demoniac, possessed by legion, who lived in the tombs, that chains couldn't constrain him, who had cut himself. When he sees Jesus, look, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting, shouting at the top of his voice from fear and horror. What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, don't torture me. And you're going to tell me, Jesus, is this Archangel Michael? who did not dare bring a word of rebuke and condemnation to Satan. And they're begging him here. And they beg Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. And what about the desert experience? Matthew 4, 1 to 11. When Jesus gets fed up with Satan, Matthew 4, 1 11, Jesus said, away from me, Satan. Get lost. 
Get out of here. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. And what does Jesus say about Satan? He tells us who Satan is. Call Satan for who he is. John 8, 44. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue. For he's a liar and the father lies. John 8, 44. So again, how then could any person imagine that Jude could possibly be identifying Christ with Michael? Seeing that the latter knew, Michael knew, he didn't possess the authority to come against the devil to condemn him, but had to invoke the authority of the one who did. And that someone is none other than the Lord Jesus himself. Clearly then, the verse from Jude proves that Jesus cannot be the Archangel Michael. There's simply no, around, no way around this inspired fact. And then, in this section, I give you a slew of commentators that tell you this is what Jude 1.9 means. Bye-bye, SDA. Bye-bye, Arians. Jesus ain't the Archangel Michael. Game over. Bye-bye. We're done.